Uh, my name is Susan Elizabeth Ryan and I'm a professor of art history in the School of Art. Um, I've been a member of the Art Avatar Initiative since the beginning. I was on the original steering committee uh, with the idea of bringing art into the mixture um, of media that um, Avatar represents. Uh, as an art historian, I became interest, I focused on contemporary art, so I became more and more interested in new media, which was what brought me in this direction. Um, and I developed a couple of courses uh, that are part of the Avatar curriculum. Um, and uh, one is a, a historical survey of electronic and digital media utilized by artists. Um, and the other is a sem more of a seminar on uh, the theory uh, and ideas behind uh, new media art. Um, and uh, th th it includes you know, network theory, um, cybernetics, um, theories about human computer interface, um, immersiveness, uh, and theories about virtual reality and subjectivity. And, and these are some of the kinds of things that my courses explored courses that I've created since Avatar um, began. I'm interested in my research in uh, going beyond traditional things that art history likes to consider, you know, paintings and sculpture. I'm much more interested in the newer things that artists are doing, and today they're doing a lot of work with digital media. And not just digital graphics. Um, I've always been interested in the possibilities of um, wearable media, uh, ever since I heard a lecture by uh, Elise Ko from the MIT Media Lab some years ago, and she was working with um, uh, you know, clothing design, incorporating all kinds of sort of uh, uh, digital functionality. The clothes would either light up, or they had net networking capabilities, um, or you know they did something else. Um, uh, and um, I've discovered since then, in the last. 10 or 15 years, there's an enormous community that is international of artists that are working in institutions around the world. Some of them are working in uh, the idea of the traditional idea of wearable computing, which is an idea that goes back to the 1960s. Uh, where somebody uh, found that he could design a computer that you could wear in your pocket, a man named Thorpe. And he would used to wear, uh, wear it, in, uh, used to put it in his pocket and take it into um, um, casinos uh, and um, calculate the odds at the roulette table. And he became very famous at this and published a book about it. And it's not exactly wearable. You know, it's really just something you put in your pocket. Uh, since the 1990s and the entrance of women into more and more numbers into engineering and computer science programs, there, there have been a, a lot of work in, like wiring up clothing. Uh, some of it creates uh, works that really make you sort of think about the process of interacting with digital technology. Um, and some of those are the most interesting pieces. In my course, Digital Art History, uh, we do um, have a day in which we um, have a sort of second life day. We, the class meets in second life um, uh, instead of meeting in a real classroom. Students have to, uh, who in the School of Art have never really spent much time in Second Life. They spend a lot of time on Facebook, but they have not, most of them had the experience, you know, of really creating their own avatar and sort of moving around in a virtual world. So they learn how to do that, uh, and we meet in Second Life. There are Second Life art museums, there are Second Life art galleries, um, and art is actually bought and sold uh, in Second Life. Um, uh, as well, using Linden dollars, although we don't do that during the class. Uh, this year we met uh, an artist uh, who works a lot uh, uh, with Second Life um, and is one of the founders of something called Second Front, which is a uh, group of artists who do performance work, art performance in Second Life. Um, and we met him and he took a to us on a tour of one of his recent exhibitions uh, so it's a nice way to be able to actually have the students be able to talk to an artist.